process with same more, uh, yeah, okay, MongoDB docs. So it's still a part of the refactoring. Yep. Okay. So. So I will very briefly uh, talk about organizing the project. Um, so we we discussed a little bit uh, splitting the project into the two executables uh, and having um, a single subfolder with all the library functions. So I, I talk uh, with Tomasz about it and I want to iterate it. Um, you can have multiple um, sub folders here, right? So for assignment two, you can have you can try to split your functionality into multiple subfolders. Um, but the, the problem is that you, when you do that, you will have different packages and you have to expose things from outside the package so you communicate between them, right? In assignment two, you have quite tightly coupled functionality. You have to do a couple of things which you probably will fit comfortably into four or three files. And then if you do multiple folders, you have to spend extra time and extra effort thinking of what it is that it needs to be public and needs to be exported and what is internal to the package. If you keep everything in a single folder, everything will be reusable within the files that you have there, right? So that's the starting point. It's, it's easier, it's not the cleanest, but it's easier to start with, with that. And then the only thing that you need to export is the things that the command will need to use, right? So everything that is uh, that the command needs to use has to be public and exported outside of the package. So it has to have capital uh, function names and capital structure types, capital letter, and so on, right? If you split it into two, let's say two subfolders, and one is reusing something from the other, the other needs to publicly expose it, ex ex you know, um, make it external. So it needs to have the proper visibility. You can do that, but it, it is an extra work. And for such a coupled functionality as we have it today, uh, it is kind of an overkill. If you have a project which consists of, you know, uh, 10 files or 20 files, and you have a kind of a easily identifiable module that can have some public functionality, it has like uh, public st data structures with some operations on it, then it makes sense to sort of package it up into a uh, sub package and then expose the functionality. But I kind of encourage you to start with a just single namespace to start with and try to logically organize your files in such a way that a file contains some sort of a logical um, structures and types and functions and then think of what would make possible to have it exported, right? You don't need to export it because the only things you need to export are the things that are required in the command, right? So if I if I have a quick look into the student DB uh, and the main Go, you will see that I do have to uh, import the, the actual package that I'm using, uh, using a proper fully qualified uh, naming. And then I have, I am using some things, right? So one thing that I'm using is student DB. I'm using this global uh, database. Uh, so I have, so th this becomes like the entry point to my package. And then everything that is, that I need from the package, I have to prefix with that, right? So one thing that I'm using uh, is the global student DB. It has to have capital S and it's exported, right? The other thing that I'm using is potentially student MongoDB. So I have in-memory or Mongo-based backend. Okay, so I have those two things. And then I have to expose uh, the initialization of the, the initialization function for the uh, global DB. So the actual global DB is the, the variable that is globally uh, um, referenced. And then I have uh, two handlers, which are one is local. So one has small h, which is my local one here. So uh, it's not you know visible anywhere else. And then the other one has capital H, right? So I'm kind of exposing three things and everything else is package visible, right? I don't need to expo export it outside of the package. So this handler student needs to have capital H 
but then everything that this handler function uses is internal to the package. It's not visible outside of the package. Um, so, you know, when you're refactoring your code and when you're refactoring stuff to uh, fit into this uh, command pattern, what you should start is you should start writing the main function. So you should go into your, um, into your command subfolder and see what sort of uh, main functions do you have there, how they will look like and what they will use. Because whatever they use needs to be exported and made public on your, in your package. And then everything else, you just shuffle it into a single, um, single folder, which will be like a package containing all your library. And then apart from the exporting things, everything else can be small caps and should be public, um, can be private to the package. There are some exceptions. So the exception is that um, you have, for example, if I, if I look, look in here and I go to a student, I have some data structures. I, for example, have, no, it's not here. I have here some data structures like student storage, right? Which is an interface which I made uh, public, uh, exported. It doesn't need to be exported. Um, and then I have a student struct. If I'm not using a student struct outside, which I'm not, I can have it a small s, right? But those field, field names here, because I'm using the uh, JSON parser, uh, you've probably noticed that if they are not capitalized, they are ignored by the parser, right? So even though we not really need to export the whole thing outside of the package, and even though we probably could use small s here, uh, we do need to name the fields with capital names, capital first letter, because then the JSON parser wouldn't work if we did otherwise, right? It requires those fields to be uh, caps, even though we don't really use it outside of the package. And we will not be able to use it outside of the package because the type uh, here might be a uh, small s, right? Um, so the way you kind of go about it is you go into your um, command, you sketch your main function, you see what do you need in the main, and then what do you need in the main needs to be caps, first letter cap, uh, and that needs to be exported outside of the package. Shuffle everything else into some sort of a package name in your, in your directory folder, uh, and then organize the files here in kind of a logical structure. Once you do that, and once you identify that some things are really self-contained and are reusable across multiple projects, then you can isolate it into its own package and uh, export some of the functionality to the outside, right? If you're doing kind of object-oriented design, you would do the same. You would have a class which has some public, uh, publicly visible uh, things, and some classes are public, some classes are private, and then within the package, you have more than you're exporting. So you, you may have some classes which are not visible outside of the package. It's kind of similar, um, um, yeah, similar attitude. Why do I do? Why do I encourage you to just have one one um, one package? Well, it kind of simplifies initial uh, structuring of your code. You can always refactor it, and you can always make it more complicated. But you should always start with a, with with the minimum um, uh, organization and don't complicate it too much. If you end up having three subfolders and each subfolder has one file, it actually adds complexity. I prefer to have one folder with three files inside because it's easier to navigate and it's easier to understand what is happening, who depends on what and how it works, right? Uh, and I don't believe in assignment two or assignment three, you really need to export um, uh, functionality across multiple projects, like publicly, right? Um, right, so if you, because, le yeah, let's have a, again a quick look here. If you do that, if you do have multiple subfolders, then you end up having multiple entries like this, right? So, you know, this is my main project and this is actually a sub package of this package, right? Uh, student DB is a package inside this, the main thing. Like you remember from assignment one, we only we didn't have subfolders. We had everything in the kind of a top level, right? So if you imagine this being deleted, and I I have only this, it would still work. It it would work as a package, right? 
uh, if I had some sort of um, uh, IM2681 functionality inside that folder. Uh, but then we kind of add we adding a, a sub package in a sense. I mean, you know, there is no concept of sub, sub packages. It's just everything is a package, but it can be nested inside a bigger package. Um, so a student DB is a package inside here, and we refer to it via the last component of the path, right? Um, so then, as I recommend, you start with the main, see what you are using here. All those things need to be exported out of out of your package, and you need to prefix it with your with uh, whatever the last name is. That's why Go recommends use, uh, using some sort of a succinct short naming convention, so it's easy to refer to things. Um, o of course, you can re you know rename it. I can give it a name if I want to, uh, but typically we just do this. Um, and then the things you refer to needs to have a cap letter. Um, so sketch your main. It will not work, but at least you will kind of sketch what it contains. And then uh, you will know what you need to export inside your uh, sub, sub package, uh, sub folder in, of your main kind of folder, and put, put files directly here, all of them. And what it means, they will be in the same package. So this is a student DB package. So each of those files is inside student DB package, right? We do that for all those, those files. And they can see each other functions. Even though they are in different files, everybody can see everybody's functions because they belong to the same package. So even if something is with small letter, it is visible across everything, right? Uh, it is a self-contained unit. And with small number of files and relatively small number of lines of code, that makes sense just to have everything in one place. So that's it. Um, there is um, one extra thing that I wanted to kind of explain. So you like currently we have um, we have the main folder with some subfolders, and then some things are visible outside, which we do use using this um, executable. So we refer to it via this kind of uh, path. And this path, if I go to, um, let's open a new window. If I go to my, no, if I go to my go path, and if I, um, yeah, yeah, show it. Uh, if I go to source, all those, oops, all those things are here, right? So I have, um, I have the uh, GitHub folder, and if I go to GitHub, I will have the Marnie folder, and then I have this IMT thing here, right? So. The thing that I'm referring to in here lives in my file system under uh, go path slash source slash github.com marnie blah blah blah, right? Okay, so what happens if I don't have it on GitHub? Um, well, you know, I can just like what, like on GitHub, I have a project called this with some subfolders, right? That's the name of the project on GitHub. But let's say I, I, um, I'm planning to put it on GitHub, but I haven't put it on GitHub yet, right? So if I do, um, if I go and do um, go get, go get github.com, uh, you know, Marnie something, uh, something that I haven't put on GitHub yet. Right, it will not work, but I can still go and um, so where I am, I can go to GitHub, I can go to myself to to whatever um, my ID is, and I can git uh, pull in here, or I can just create you know I can do git in it a new project just right here, right. So as long as you're doing it manually, it doesn't matter how Go manages that, it will still work and you can still refer to it using that notation, right? It's just that you cannot use Go get to get it because you're managing it manually. 
Uh, so to not confuse the manual management from uh, uh, from go get management, uh, sometimes what we do is um, okay. So one more. one back so I'm now in source so if I do this uh, you see I have something called Mariusz local right I cannot say go get Mariusz local uh, project one of course it's not gonna work because you know Mariusz local is not a host right but it will work if I say Mariusz local slash whatever slash whatever right it will refer to my uh, folder structure as I have it locally so I can have if I go to Mariusz local, I can uh, have some repositories here, which are not visible publicly anywhere. So go get will never work with them, but I can kind of uh, uh, use git command to uh, to work with them. Let's see if I have some. I have some, you know, I have a uh, hello world and a lot of things that are kind of local, which go get will not work with, right? So I have uh, probably did git clone and then use some sort of a uh, GitHub or whatever, wherever the, the Git was stored, and then pull some of those projects here, uh, and then I can use them using Go without having them being published publicly, right? So if you're experimenting with things and you don't want to put all your experiments on GitHub, you can either pretend that they are on GitHub and manually pull stuff under your GitHub kind of a folder under source, or create uh, another, um, yeah, another folder under source, which will work as a prefix instead of the host for your, for your content. And then you refer to it via the, the same notation as, as in here, right? One caveat about this, um, everything that you do here has to work on Heroku if you want to deploy it on Heroku, right? So for local experiments, this local thing works fine. But if you are deploying stuff on Heroku, then, you know, Heroku needs to get all the dependencies from somewhere. So if something is not publicly visible anywhere, then, you know, how are you going to do this? Okay, so normally for assignment two, you don't have to deal with it because the only external dependency that we have is the MGO, Mongo, the driver, which is visible. But imagine that you do have some dependencies that are not publicly visible in some private repository. Then how would you do that? Well, you know, one way of doing it is to create a folder here called lib or something like this and have the dependencies actually in your tree, right? So you make kind of uh, all your dependencies visible here. So then when you push it to Heroku, Heroku can compile the whole thing and just work with the local um, dependencies around here, right? And they will be referenced the same way as you're referencing yourself, right? Uh, they, they will just work. So then you have two ways of referencing it. You can either use, uh, like we're doing here, you can use the absolute path names like this, and the absolute path names don't have a dot in front, but if I say dot slash something, 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 that means I'm referring to something um, in the file system relative to where the current project is, right? So uh, if I said, uh, dot dot slash dot dot slash student db to go two levels up and then go to student db that dependency would work as well but then you're using relative uh, package dependencies so then go commands will complain so you cannot mix the global and the relative um, things because then it, it kind of gets confused so if i go to my um so let's go to GitHub, to the student DB thing. And if I say go build, and I will use the local one. So, okay, let's make it, yeah. So I will try to build my main Go from the student DB using the relative path, right? I will try to do that. Yeah, it actually worked. Um, yeah, but some, some things don't work. So sometimes you get a com uh, uh, comment saying you're mixing kind of relative and absolute uh, path names. Yeah? Did you update the path name? Sorry? Did you update the, uh, the path name? Because uh, I didn't see that you wrote uh, that it was relative path. 
yeah, so here here is the relative path to the main, but main references an absolute path into the student DB. Yeah, so in the code I didn't change it, so I can. Um, so let's do that. Command student DB main. Whoa, my Vim is not working. Interesting. So if I change that to be relative, so I'm inside. Okay, let's see. So main is using student DB. Yeah, let me see. Um, command, no, I have to go, go two levels. Two levels up. Oops. Yeah. So Right, so what happened now is I'm using I'm like I'm trying to build it using a relative paths and then it says um it cannot find the MGO reference using the relative paths that I've been trying to compile with, right? So instead of using the absolute paths now for all the dependencies, it switched to using the relative ones and it says, okay, we're trying to build all your stuff using the relative kind of uh, dependencies and we're getting stuck because MGO version two is not local, it's not visible anywhere locally, right? Because I'm using MGO version two from the workspace not from any of the local dependencies. So now if I try to do, uh, if I try to build, um, so remember I only change it in the main, uh, main.go. So if I say go build github.com marnie uh, imt2681 student db student yeah, oops, student db uh, command, yeah, command uh, student db. So now I'm trying to build it using the absolute path, right? Using the workspace. And now it doesn't build it as well because it says, um, okay, uh, the, the local import is not in is not a local package, so it, it it's kind of getting confused, right? So where, if you go with local compilation of local packages, you should keep everything local, and then if you're going kind of with the normal proper workspace name name uh, spaces to build, you should use the uh, yeah the the full qualified uh, names like this. So if we do that again, and if I do this now. Uh, then it works fine and it kind of uh, says oh yeah yeah th th this file already exists and it's up to date right yeah so we need to have our project in that uh, go path in that uh, path yeah that's right yeah so so for this to work you have to have your project under your go path source somewhere yeah either under github or whatever repo you're using it doesn't have to be github so if you go to the to the one uh, I have. Um, yeah, so one more. So you see I have a, a number of different um, sources for the packages, right? Um, doesn't have to be GitHub. Yep. Uh, if it's not uploaded to GitHub, the, uh, the, the dependency of the package, then how would you reach it in Heroku deployment? Right, so if your code is not deployed on um, on GitHub, you're pushing your code 
like you have your code. Um, yeah, I actually didn't test it on on Heroku. It may not work. Um, yeah. So so locally it will work for sure uh, because I've tested it. I you know you don't need to have your code on GitHub for your local things to compile and work locally on your laptop. Uh, when you're pushing to Heroku, theoretically, it should also work because Heroku doesn't need to pull your stuff from uh, GitHub. But because you're doing this, uh, Heroku may pull that uh, from GitHub, right? So I, I, I don't know. I actually didn't test it. So I didn't try to push to Heroku something that I didn't have on a GitHub repo. Uh, I usually just do push to GitHub first and push to Heroku after, right? So you keep those two repos kind of in sync, yeah. But I would imagine that may not work, yeah. So uh, having told all of this, uh, that the, the bottom line is that we need to test your code. We need to have access to your repo. So it, it needs to be kind of in public anyway, right? Um, so for, for the assignment, you, it doesn't matter that much. You will follow this pattern and you will do this like uh, properly with GitHub or some other repo. That's fine. But for your own experimentations, you don't need to keep all your stuff on GitHub. You can happily develop without actually having a GitHub repo available and public. You can use the local uh, package. Yep. So uh, where do you stand when you say go test? Yeah. yeah, exactly. So that is that's getting a bit confusing. <laughs> so let me just check. So also the testing doesn't uh, like this mixing of relative and uh, absolute, right? Usually it works quite fine if you stand in the. So for example, if I go to GitHub company, uh, this one, and if I go go test uh, v, and I use a relative um, path, so. Let me just show you here. I have, um, so if we go here, I have a number of uh, packages. One, oh yeah, I didn't push it to the, um, I didn't push it yet. So if we go, go work, source, GitHub. Yeah, it's quite small. I don't know how to make the fonts bigger. So anyway, it, it has a number of folders, and one of the folders is called parsing JSON, and it's sort of like a sub package of the main folder structure, right? Uh, so then if I go to um, to my root of the project, and I say relative path parsing JSON, and I execute that. Um, parsing JSON, and I execute that, it will actually run all the tests inside that package, right? So it is kind of okay. Uh, you just go with your CD to the root of your folders, and then run that. If I were to say go, Test and instead of parsing JSON, I would say github.com to six eight one student db parsing JSON. Um, parsing JSON, it will work as well, right? So I can use the full fully qualified name of the package that I want to test, and it will work, but I can just relatively go into the root and then test and it will kind of work too. Uh, but in, when we submit ours, yeah. you will do some automatic testing? Yes. So how do you know the name of the packages that we have as or uh, test cases stored? Yeah, I do this. And it basically go into all the sub packages that you have and run tests inside each of uh, and every one of those. Okay, uh, and one more thing. When I searched online uh, in the previous lecture, because of the uh, past event, uh, they said that they recommend having one 
kit where you store all the tests. So uh, apparently Go doesn't require your tests to be in the same package as the thing they are testing. True. So is that something we should do, or should we have more tests like you seem to have with the test in the reflected uh, folder for the uh, for the package? Yeah. So. Um, it depends. Uh, I feel that if you're testing stuff that requires the access to the local package things, it's better to have it inside the folder that the package is in, right? Uh, if you're writing tests that only test the publicly visible APIs, then of course you can have it in any other package, right? Um, so it sort of depends on the nature of the tests you're doing. Um, for this type of testing, uh, it doesn't matter really, uh, as long as you have a proper test coverage. And I believe if you're only testing the public APIs, you may have a harder time covering all the unit tests for everything that you're doing. And also they tend to be more like uh, integration tests, like more, you, 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 uh, you know, what we expose outside of the package is usually very small amount and very, uh, a lot of work, right? When, when you're doing unit tests, you want to isolate tests to very small chunks of your private stuff that you can kind of test it before it's integrated into larger pieces. Um, so it may be useful to have more tests inside the package than a kind of outside of it. Yeah. It, it, like we spend more time on testing strategies in the third year. Like we, it, it is a complicated topic. Like how do you organize your tests, how much unit testing you do, how much integration testing you do, how much end-to-end uh, -end tests you do, uh, where you keep the stuff, how you organize it, how you automate it. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter that much for this course. Like keep things simple. Put the tests into the same package, you know, add extra two or three files and that's it. Yep. Of course, do we go more Um we we do that in the applied computer science project and and the integration projects in the master's level i i don't think we're doing much more in the undergraduate level apart from the professional programming in the final semester sixth semester of the um bachelor program so there is a five point course called professional programming and we do uh test strategies and test coverage there um, but we do more in the fourth year. Um, yeah. All right. Any other questions about organizing your packages and organizing the code? Is it clear, clearer now? It, it is not that complex, actually. Like, uh, keep it simple. Keep all your library into one subfolder. Keep the commands into the command uh, structure. Try to keep only one file in your main, like in your executables, and expose what you need for the executables. And also think logically, like what would el what else would I would kind of expose outside? What else might be useful uh, for people to use if I'm building another executable? What else I may potentially be using? Um, but you, the bare minimum to expose is the stuff that you need in the main.go. Okay, so um, given that I have the microphone and the camera, I will also go a little bit into the JSON parsing now. So I wrote um, like the normal way of us doing, where's the, uh, okay, let me tidy up a little bit here. 